How many times have you heard someone say, well, they were suited, as if that magically justifies playing a weak hand? This right here is what I call the myth of suitedness. Hi, I'm Terry with from PokerRailbird.com. What's with the idea that two cards of the same suit are somehow special? That they deserve to be played just because they are suited? Yes, of course suited cards do give you a chance to make a flush, but the actual flush draw odds are way lower than most players realize. And the truth is, suited hands are one of the most overrated factors in all of poker. This isn't an opinion. It's math. And in this video, we are going to walk through the numbers. You'll see the traps. And it will give you a better way to evaluate poker hand value beyond just color coordination. If you've ever chased a flush, if you've ever said, but they were suited as your only excuse, this one's for you. Let's break this down properly. A suited hand just means both of your whole cards are the same suit, like the eight of spades, five of spades, or queen of hearts and seven of hearts. That's it. It doesn't mean they're connected. It doesn't mean they're strong. And it definitely doesn't mean they're profitable. What it really means is that you now have about a 6.5% probability of making a flush by the river. That's roughly 14.4 to 1 odds against you. Let that sink in. You'll miss your flush over 93% of the time. And yet, this tiny statistical edge gets massively overvalued. Why? Because players see two cards of the same suit and think they've caught something special. Let's put some context around that. You'll be dealt any two suited cards about 1 in 10 hands, or 10% 10 of the time. You'll get suited connectors like 6 of spades, 7 of spades, or jack of hearts, 7 of hearts, about 14% of the time. So, altogether, you're holding a suited hand of some kind roughly 1 in 4 hands, 24% of the time. But here's the question I want you to ask. Would you play 8-5 if it weren't suited? Would you really be calling a raise with the 8 of diamond and the 5 of clubs? Because if the only reason you're playing is, well, they're suited, you're falling into the same trap as thousands of losing players. We'll break down the math behind these hands later in this video, and I hope you stick around for that. All right, let's get into the real numbers. Because suited hands aren't nearly as magical as players seem to believe. Let's repeat something we said earlier, because it matters. You'll be dealt suited cards, connected or not, about 24% of the time. That includes suited connectors, one gappers, two and three gappers, and just plain junk like nine of spades, three of spades. Now, let's look at the flop. The flop will contain three cards of the same suit just 5.20% of the time. That's 18.23 to 1 odds. And keep in mind, that's any three of the same suit, not necessarily yours. The chance of flopping a made flush with your suited hand? Just 0.80%, or 118 to 1. You'll see two cards of the same suit on the flop about 55% of the time. That's odds of 0.82 to 1, but again, not always your suit. So, what about a flush draw? You'll flop a flush draw about 10% of the time, or 9 to 1 odds. And if you do flop a flush draw, you've got what we call 9 outs in theory. That gives you about a 35% probability to make your flush by the river, or 1.9 to 1 odds. Sounds decent, right? Well, not so fast, because you don't get to see both the turn and the river for one price. Not where I play, you don't. You're calling a bet on the flop, hoping to hit on the turn. That's about 19%, or 4.11 to 1 odds. And if you miss, which will happen over 80% of the time, you get to call another bet on the river for another 4.11 to 1 shot at your miracle card. Let's run an example. You flop a flush draw with 8 of spades and the 7 of spades. The pot is $60. An opponent bets $35, making the pot $95. You have to call $35, which gives you 2.71 to 1 pot odds. But your chance to hit your flush on the turn is 4.22 to 1 odds. So I'll ask you this. Is that a good idea? Is that a profitable call long term or even short term? Now let's make it worse. You're hoping to hit your 8 high flush. In a 9-handed game, where there's about a 35% probability that another player also holds 2 of your suit. And chances are, one of their cards is higher than your 8. So even if you hit, are you even good? And here's something most players never think about. You're assuming you have nine cleanouts, but if someone else holds two of your suit, that drops your real number to seven or fewer. And out of those seven other players who have 14 cards between then or 27% of the deck that you haven't seen, 
Do you think there might be at least one of your suit? Two? Let's go deeper. 18 pocket cards have been dealt. That's 34.6% of the deck. Add in the three flop cards and a burn. That's 22 cards total, or 42.3% of the deck already out. You've seen five of the seven cards that will make your hand, or 71.43% of your potential hand. That means you're placing your entire plan on two cards, just 28.57% of your full hand, still unknown. And out of those two unknown cards, you're hoping to hit just the right one to complete an eight high flush while getting bad pot odds and assuming nobody else has your suit. You still feel good about chasing suited cards just for the sake of suitedness? So if the math is this clear, why do so many players keep chasing suited hands? Let's call it what it is. It's not logic, it's psychology. Suited cards look pretty. They feel connected. They whisper potential, not problems. And when you hit one of those rare flushes, you remember it. Your brain locks it in like a jackpot memory. Meanwhile, the other 93% of the time that you missed, they fade into the background. That's confirmation bias. You're subconsciously reinforcing the myth, hand after hand. Suitedness also plays into something deeper. The human tendency to overvalue rare outcomes. Just like people who buy lottery tickets every week. Most poker players know flushes are rare. But they still play suited cards like they're holding something powerful. And here's the kicker. Many of these hands are structurally weak. Low kickers, wide gaps, no real post-flop playability. But the suitedness acts like a disguise. It tricks players into thinking 9 of spades, 3 of spades is a real hand. It's not. The suit doesn't fix bad structure. It doesn't fix position. It doesn't protect you from domination. It just gives you a small chance to chase a draw. And an even smaller chance to get paid when you hit it. Let me be blunt. Playing hands just because they're suited is a losing strategy. You're not being deceptive. You're not mixing it up. You're just bleeding chips for a feel-good illusion. Now let's be fair. Suitedness does have value but only when it's paired with something else. While playing any two cards just because they are suited is never a good strategy, suitedness can add value, but you must have two ways to win for suitedness to matter. What do I mean by two ways to win? Let's take a few examples. Take the ace of spades, king of spades, or the ace of clubs, queen of clubs. You've got high card value and flush potential. Or the jack of diamonds, ten of diamonds, one of the best suited connectors. You've got straight possibilities and flush potential. But even here, let's be honest. With Jack-10 suited, you're about 15% to make either a straight or a flush by the river. That's 5.67 to 1. That's as good as it gets for suited connectors. And it still misses the flop about two-thirds of the time. And if you do hit your flush, you can still be high-carded, especially in a multi-way puck. Now, let's revisit that so-called playable hand, 8 of spades, 7 of spades. Sure, in the cutoff, in a multi-way pot, with deep stacks, passive opponents, and favorable pot odds. It might be playable. But even then, you're still most likely to hit nothing. Second most likely? One pair. And now what? You call a flop that with middle pair, no kicker, and hope? Or you chase a weak flush into bad pot odds? That's not strategy. That's wishful thinking. So here's the takeaway. Only play seated hands when they come with another clear edge. Structure, position, equity, playability, pot odds, and always ask yourself, what's my plan if I miss? What's my plan if I hit just one pair? Am I winning big pots or just paying to chase them? Because chasing suited cards without a plan is how you go broke, slowly, quietly, and without ever knowing what hit you. By now, the story should be clear. Suited cards aren't special. They're not premium just because they're suited. The suit alone doesn't make them strong, and it definitely doesn't make them profitable. So here are your strategic takeaways. Playing a hand just because it's suited is usually not a good idea. That's not strategy. Always ask, do I have two ways to win? If not, fold it. Suited trash is still trash. Understand the real odds. Flushes hit less than 7% of the time, pre-flop to river. Flush draws, which you are 9 to 1 odds to flop, complete only about 35% of the time by the river, and you don't get two cards for one price. Weak flushes get you stacked. You might hit your hand and still lose. That's how reverse implied odds eat you alive. Structure and position matter more than suitedness. If your hand doesn't play, well post-flop. 
the suit doesn't change that. And here's the gut check. If you wouldn't play the handoff suit, then you're playing it only because it's suited. And that is not a reason to enter a pot. So the next time you're tempted to justify a marginal hand with, well, they are suited. Stop and ask yourself, would I play this hand if it were not suited? If the answer is no, then you know what to do. Fold it. If you want to go even deeper into the numbers behind suited connectors, check out our full video titled Poker Odds Explained, Suited Connectors and Straight Draws. In that video, we break down the four structural types of straight draws, the actual probabilities of hitting, the illusion of suited connectors, and why most of them are long-term losers unless very specific conditions are met. It's part of the GTO and Poker Math series here on the channel, and it'll give you the full breakdown on when, if ever, these hands are worth the risk. We have placed the link in the description below. Suitedness is not a strategy. It's not a reason to play a hand. And it's definitely not an excuse. The math doesn't lie. Suited cards offer only a small equity boost. They miss far more often than they hit. And when they do hit, they still get outkicked, outrun, and outplayed. So the next time you hear someone say, well, they were suited, just smile, because now you know the math. I'm Terry with from PokerRailbird.com, and thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, drop a comment, and hit subscribe. And as always, we'll see you at the tables.